Gentlemen, today we're continuing my series on hats with what is actually the grandfather to the baseball cap, the flat cap, here on Big Pretty Man. Hi, and welcome back to Big Pretty Man, a channel for the extra large man who wants to live his life large and in charge. I'm your host, Timothy Big Pretty Crow. I'm a wardrobe and lifestyle consultant for the extra large man. Okay guys, today we're gonna to be going over what is actually my go-to hat for most of the, most of the time. Um, and that would be the flat cap. I wear the flat cap more often than I wear any other hat. Um, it's my daily wear hat. Um, and the reason for that is also what makes the flat cap very popular. It is, ex I use the word versatile a little too much in my descriptions of hats, I realize that. But versatility and practi practicality really apply for the for the flat cap. Why? Because unlike the the more um, stiff hats, and even with the um, the softer brim hats, you know th that you you don't need anything special to carry the 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 flat cap. You know, with any of those other hats, you're going to have to have a hot hat box or special care. Yeah, you know, uh, for the hats, you can't just toss it around. You can't toss it in a bag. You can do just that with a flat cap. You can ball it up, stick it in your back pocket. You can throw it into your, your book bag, your briefcase, your luggage. You know, and whenever you get ready to want it again, you just pop it out, back, back on your head. And it's, and it's just fine. So that makes it extremely uh, versatile and extremely practical and usable and easy to transport. Now you can stick one of these in your glove compartment or something. You know, I used to keep one in, you know, a spare one in my car. Um, in fact, I think I still do, <laughs> but uh, I think it's still in there. But anyway, uh, now the hat's called a lot of different things. It's most traditionally known as a flat cap. That's what it's usually called in England. In Wales, I think they call it a die cap. In, um, in um, Scotland, it is, is a bonnet cap. Um, in America, it's usually called a flat cap or a cabbie cap or a Jeff cap, but it's all the same cap. Um, now, one of the fascinating things about this hat is its history. And as um, I kind of hinted at, this is a hat that evolved out of politics and fashion, but it also kept evolving into another form of hat, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, first to start off, the, the flat cap or woolen caps like the, in this style, um, taking the, the visor off, if, you know, the brim off, have been around, you know, probably at least since the, the 13th, 12th, 13th century, you know, and wool. Wool was the most common um, cloth in, in Europe, especially in, in England. England's fortune, its entire economy was really based on wool at one point because they made the best wool in the world. But so a lot of people used wool. So, you know, woolen, these type of basic woolen round cap, um, you know, kind of like a beret um, type of style, um, have been around have been around for centuries. Um, the hat did start once it did start to get kind of this double, this sewn um, double crease similar to the visor. Um, started to be is known as what's kind of kind of made it look like a pancake. <laughs> Came to be known as a Tudor hat, um, and in fact, the Tudor Tudor cap is still worn. Uh, especially with um, uh, with in college graduations, usually worn by someone with a PhD or a presenter, they wear what's known as uh, the Tudor cap. So it's still something still in use. You know, if you think about the hat that was worn by Henry VIII in the famous um, his famous Holbein pa painting, that type of hat. Um, but the hat was extremely that type of hat was extremely popular. The hat seems to have evolved over time, and eventually it, it evolved. The visor, the you know, the visor brim, um, and if you ever, but if you look at some even the older, um, the 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 um, the older flat caps, the ones that are you know a little a lot wider, you'll see that resemblance. That's still that basic shape and look of the old Tudor caps. Now, one of the things that made this cap very popular among the working and lower classes um, in Europe was, especially in England, was a very strange law passed by Parliament in 1571. They were trying to increase uh, domestic 
wool sales. Once again, wool was the wool sales in, in England was their major uh, commodity. So they started to get more domestic sales. They actually made it unlawful for a man not to wear, a man over six years old, not to wear a cap, a wool cap of some sort, wool hat of some sort, on Sundays. You could actually get a fine for not wearing a wool cap on, on Sundays. Now, the aristocracy, you know, the upper class, the nobility, they were exempt from this law. It was only for the common common, common man. So therefore, the if that's really when these flat caps really started to really evolve and develop. And they also got come to be associated with the working class. This was very much a working class hat and was right up through into the 19th and even in the 20th century. Um, still, you know, it still is associated in England with a lot of, of um, different, um, usually apprentices and certain types of, of, of trades. You'll see, you know, there's a, you'll see them that they had, they wear the flat cap. Um, however, royalty did pick it up again, um, usually as a hunting, a hunting hat or, you know, we see Prince Edward, um, once again, a Prince Edward, Prince Edward, uh, uh, um, you know, who, who was become Edward VIII before he abdicated the throne and, and Duke of Windsor afterwards. You see him wearing it. And of course, when he wore it, everybody was wearing it, but most people were wearing it anyway. Now, what's really fascinating about the flat cap is that it actually evolved um, into the most popular hat period in the Western world, and that is the baseball cap. That's right. Originally, when baseball first started started off in the early 19th century, men were wearing pretty much the uh, a classic um, um, uh, um, flat cap. Um, the the version they usually wore, though, was the eight paneled um, the eight pound the eight paneled flat cap. It's a, it's a the hat, I can't really see because it's black, but it has these eight triangular um, strips of cloth that are sewn together with a, and fastened with a central button with the, um, with, with the visor. And with this one, actually, I said it has a snap so it can come undone, but you never wear it like that. Anyway, so they wore this hat pretty traditionally. Why? Because it had a bit of more of a visor and it could... Uh, kind of keeps the sun out of your eyes, which is what you need. You're playing baseball, trying to catch the ball. Um, so, you know, we see like early on, we see that this type of hat was being worn. The hat did sort of evolve. The first ones to wear what we think of as a baseball cap, a bit of a change in this, was the, the, um, the Brooklyn Knickerbockers. Um, a team that, and they wore, first they started wearing a straw hat, that didn't work, and then they went to this type of paddled hat, and that's, that, that became, with a little bit of a longer brim, and that became the, the, the first kind of baseball hat. However, it wasn't until, um, and that was in 1849, it wasn't really until 1860 that another team um, the Bro Brooklyn Excelsiors, <laughs> they actually started wearing what was known as the first baseball hat. It was called a, the Brooklyn style hat. And basically it was the same. It was a, uh, it was a, um, a, a, a paneled hat um, with a longer brill and it was a, but, and it was also a little tighter, not so billowy. Um, and that really became, that really became the, the traditional hat. And by the 1940s, it had evolved. The, the visor got longer and longer because they realized they needed more to keep the sun out of their face. And that evolved into the baseball cap. Um, so really, this type of eight, eight panel hat, um, which is actually also known as the newsboy hat, was the, is the grandfather of the modern baseball cap. And of course, now everybody's wearing baseball caps. You know, they've actually replace most of the more formal hats in, um, in the Western world, which I see as just a crying shame. Now, as I was saying, the 
Um, the flat cap is really great because it really can go with just about any type of outfit. As you see, I'm wearing it now with a bit of more of a business, ca you know, business uh, um, um, casual look. Um, I can just as easily wear it with, uh, you know, a, a suit, even though well, the suit might be a bit much, but it really goes well if you're wearing like an overcoat with it and it's the hat you need to put on. Um, so it really works. But I can also, I, I, though I can work with this outfit or in this outfit, <laughs> yes, I think that the flat cap looks equally good with um, both a more business, business dress um, as well as in a more casual dress. And, um, and actually, I think that this uh, newsboy with a leather jacket looks fantastic together. Um, and um, kind of puts me in mind of Marlon Brando's uh, in The Wild Bunch, you know. Um, and I, I can live with that connotation. <laughs> so, you know, and it's actually this, um, this particular uh, newsboy, um, eight panel newsboy is my favorite hat. Are the one I wear the most, uh, especially in the winter. As you can see, it's starting to kind of show a little bit of the signs of the wear. I don't care. It's, I still love it. It is still getting very broke in. Uh, you know, it's it's just getting better with age. Now, I do have several different um, um, flat caps. Uh, you know, I do have this one, which actually comes from Thomas Farthing, which is a company that has a store right down from the British Museum in London, and that's where I got it. And, um, and if you are in that area, I'd really recommend going to their hat shop. It's a really nice hat shop. But uh, and you can see even this form, this more traditional flat cap form, still works very well in this outfit. Um, you know, or even if I wanted to put on the gray one, and in fact with this outfit, I think that it might even look a little bit better. What do you think? Oh, I make that pretty. Or does it make me pretty? No, I make it pretty. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so as you can see, the flat cap's very versatile. And not only that, even for big guys. Now notice I put in all three, and they also seem to fit well with my face. You know, unlike when I, you know, some hats uh, where you have a short brim or something like that, they don't really work to make your head look, you know, so much bigger and your face look bigger. Actually, because of the brim and the shape, the, you know, and the way they billow out on the sides, you don't get that with the flat cap. The flat cap looks very good on bigger guys. Um, you know, and, you know, even though I would say that I personally think that the Newsboy, uh, wrong hat, <laughs> sorry about that, I do think that the Newsboy actually looks a little bigger on bigger guys because it, you've got a little bit more material, a little more billowing, it's a little bigger hat, you know, and therefore it gives a little more, you know, it, you know, bigger hats on, on guys, on, on big guys. That's the combination, big hat, big guy. You know, big guy, big hat. That's the what you should look for in any hat form. Small hats on a big guy, no. Uh, but uh, with the, you know, with the flat cap, they work. And I would recommend going out and getting you some good quality um, flat caps. Um, the companies I would recommend are Mercros. They're a good company. Also, uh, Hannah Hats. They're good Irish. You know, the Irish make these hats very well. It's a very traditional um, hat in Ireland. Um, you know, they're they're always going to have the, the better Thomas Farthing, as I said. They're another good they're a company. But you know, do shop around. Make sure they're made out of good quality material. I would avoid, um, you know, the ones that are made out of like. Um, you know, leather or, or denim or, you know, some of these other materials. Um, the ones in linen aren't too bad for the summer. Um, and that's the, one, that's the one thing I will say is that this is really not a very good summer hat, especially if you're in the U.S. Um, because, you know, in the hot summer, you know, when it's 100 degrees, a wool hat on your head is usually not a very good idea. <laughs> it is very much a, a fall and winter hat. Um, I'm actually going to be talking in my, probably my next video about um, summer hats and a few tricks I have with summer hats. But for the winter, and the, you know, I would go with these. And, and I, that's the reason I'd also, because you're not going to really wear them that much in the summer, um, then I would definitely go with, with the quality wool um, tweed um, flat caps. And of course, the ones that are made in, um, in Ireland and in England are really the better ones. 
There are a few good American companies ones out there too, but I stick with the tradition. You know, um, every single one of them that I have have all been made in Ireland. So, um, you know, so yeah, they're they're a very versatile they're a very versatile hat. One that I enjoy wearing. Um, I wear it. You know, uh, it is my go-to. And uh, so I'd really recommend going out and, you know, and, and getting yourself one, getting yourself a couple. You know, try to avoid brighter colored ones, um, you know, like in bright reds. That's because they're hard to match. Stick to the tartans and the, um, you know, the, um, the uh, maybe a hound's tooth or um, herringbone design. You know, um, you want to avoid, but you want to avoid solid like bright red or bright, you know, because they're hard to match with the outfits. Whereas if you get something with more of a tartan design or, you know, those other designs, they're going to pretty much go with any outfit, which is what I just showed with all three of these hats. You know, that they, they fit in just fine. Um, so, so that's all I've got for the uh, flat cap. Um, it is definitely one of my favorite, my most used hats, if not my most favorite hat. Um, which I find are ironic, you know, it's uh, it's probably one of the hats that I I don't dislike them, but you know uh, that I they're in my least favor, but I end up wearing them the most Why because they're practical, uh, you know, and, and they're convenient So, you know, definitely go out and, and get yourself a, co a couple. Uh, you'll find them very handy and in and um, Hey, if you're enjoying my content if you join listen to my big mouth as i always said if you have your own suggestions about hats or want to discuss it i would love to hear from you so you can reach you know leave me a line down below give me a thumbs up you know a like um and uh, you know be sure to subscribe um and I, i'd love to hear from you whether it be on uh you know in the comments below or you can reach me through facebook through twitter through instagram you know give me a holler and if you have any you know any any questions about anything or want to discuss anything i love hearing from you guys so go out there and get yourself a nice flat cap you know and step out like a night like a chap and until i see you see you next time stay pretty